Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. So tonight we're going to talk about upgrading your edge switch to the latest general release and some of the things that come along with that, but I need your help real quick before we get to that. So I've got a lot of content coming out, a lot of Ubiquity content, but I've got a couple other videos that I have to do. GearBest sent me this Mi router, and as you can see, if you saw the pictures, but you can see there, it looks like it's all in Chinese there. I'm actually going to give this away after I create the video, and uh, the giveaway rules will be in the video when I do this. So I have this that I'm going to be doing a video on that I need to get done, so uh, GearBest will continue to send me networking goodies, but we're going to give this guy away. And the second thing that I need to do a video on, besides all the other gear I've already introduced you to, is Zycel has sent me a full stack of their Nebula hardware, which is supposed to compete with uh, Unify, I guess. I'm not 100% sure. They got a hold of me and asked if I would take a look at it, and I said absolutely. So they sent me over uh, the firewall they sent a switch and they sent an access point so I'm going to be doing a video on that but my question to you is what do you want to see first do you want to see the me router that I'm going to give away or do you want to see the Zycel full stack I've got to get them both done I just want to know which one you want to see first so put your answer to that down in the comments below so what we're gonna get down to now is the latest version of the edge switch software and this was released uh, a little while ago, uh, about two weeks ago, and I wanted to wait before I did this video on it just to see if anything you know, major was going to come out of it. There has been, in a very limited uh, quantity, some issues that people are um, bringing up about errors on uh, some connections but I'm running this in production on a few switches and I'm not seeing that so we are going to go ahead and look at the release notes look at what's new and we're gonna go ahead and back up the configuration on one of my edge switches and upgrade the software so let's do that now so I'll put the link to this down in the description but this is the edge max edge switch software release version 1.7.3 and I am not upgrading a 10 gig switch. I am upgrading a that is a 24 light. So, and I've got a few other switches. That's one of the thing that uh, you guys are going to get to see is I actually have a, a full stack for the edge uh, side now. So, you know, a few different switches as well as a few different routers. We're going to throw those all in a rack and have a full stack, and it's going to be fantastic but what we're dealing with tonight is the 24 light so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna download this firmware right here and while that's downloading we're gonna come down here and we're gonna look at the new features they've added UNMS support and they tell you a little bit about the command line interface they have added a PoE ping watchdog feature and it apparently detects a specific remote IP by ping. If it doesn't respond, then it uh, power cycles the port. If you have tough switches or some other switches that are used, uh, usually used in the WISP environment, you are probably familiar with the ping watchdog. They have added a PoE power reset, so it turns the power on and off after a specified time the add poe power keeper feature so this feature keeps the power during a software reboot so if you reboot your your switch but you've got something powered and you don't want it I don't know, a cloud key maybe and you don't want it powered off then it will keep the power so that's pretty cool added a power consumed meter so we're not going to get to see that on this particular switch they've made some default configuration changes where they remove read write uh, private communities in the default configuration and look at this list of bug fixes and enhancements let's see they fixed spanning tree path costs they added a log message when a port rolls in transition that's all spanning tree 
uh, lower log lower log level when receiving invalid BB B P D U's. That's all spanning tree. L L D P. They fixed some packet stuff. S fixed uh, wrong behavior when some voice over I P phones warm reboot. P O E. They enhanced the P O E log. Radius C L I. Uh, they added radius server key with plain text password. Reduce boot up time. Um, here's the lag. Fail to fast apply link speed. So some of these notes aren't really comprehensive. So you're going to kind of have to look at this. And sometimes, you know, they have links to, you know, the forum articles where some of these things are discussed. So it looks like they've upgraded light HTTPD and OpenSSL. So we will check that out. It looks like they fi fixed some other issues. So uh, all in all, looks like it is a pretty good upgrade. And as always, you should make a backup and test this and be prepared to roll back. Have a you know a rollback plan in case this upgrade doesn't work the way you'd like it to. So we're going to pop up the Chrome uh, ubiquity discovery tool. We're going to get into the edge router. We're going to back it up. Then we're going to upgrade it. So uh, let's get to it. Okay. So you can see that we've got our ubiquity device discovery tool up here and the lab edge switch 24 is at 66.6. So we're going to go ahead and bring the login up for that device. All right. Here is our login for this device. Oh, and once we put in the right password, we are going to first go to, now this was a, a beta version that was released if you uh, are a beta member of uh, the Edge Max community. So I was running the beta, kind of testing it out. Now we're on the, the full stable release. So we're going to go to System, we're going to go to Utilities, and we're going to go to Transfer. And we are going to download a file. And we are going to download the startup config. We're going to tell it to begin the transfer, and here in just a second, it's going to go ahead and download the .scr file, which your computer may think is a screensaver file. It's not. I believe it actually stands for script.scr, and that is the backup file. So we have our backup of our edge router. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to system. We are going to go to firmware. We're going to go, you could go to the status uh, tab to see uh, where you're at here. So this is, a, if you're not on a newer version of the firmware, this may look a little different. Here's our configuration and upgrade. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to choose our file that we downloaded this, uh, Edge Switch 1.7.3. So we've selected the file and we're going to go ahead and hit begin transfer. And you can see there's a progress bar. Older versions of the software did not have that. I'm trying to remember when they actually added that progress bar in. It's I think it's it's been there since a 1.7. dot something. I'm not 100% sure. So this transfer usually takes a little while if you're used to the edge switch. I've I've seen it go like that, and I've seen it kind of chug along like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'm going to let this do its thing and when it's done we will reboot into the new firmware. Just a quick update. You can see that once this gets going it starts actually it starts you know click along at a pretty good pace. So I literally just switched to another screen, responded to an IM came back and it was already at 44 percent and just in this short time we're already up to 65 percent so we will be right back okay we are at 99 percent and i am so excited about this uh it's been sitting at 99 percent for a little while here it should just kind of go over and be done so 
It says the file contents are valid. It's now copying the file to Flash. All right, so the transfer is done. So we're going to go ahead and hit close. Now we're going to be back on the configuration and upgrade. And what we want to do is where it says next active, we want to select that, which is the version that we upgraded, and we're going to hit submit. It's going to twirl around for a second. We'll save our configuration. And then we're going to go down to utilities and we're going to go to restart switch. And we are going to restart without the core dump. And so our switch is now going to reboot. And as soon as this guy is done rebooting, we'll be right back. All right, looks like the switch is finally responding to ping request. So let's stop that. And let's reload the UI for the switch. Doesn't seem to be loading a hundred percent faster. You got a normal temperature status. We're at sixty-two percent memory usage, ninety-eight percent. But we just we just got done rebooting, so it looks like there's some spanning tree stuff happening. Looks like we got some links up for some VLANs. So let's go back over to our list because we said we were going to look at a couple of these upgrade light. HTTPD and open SSL so that's probably on the back end but let's go over to the over to the uh, HTTPS which is under management access and system and we've got these enabled let's see and we're still on TLS version 1 and SSL 3 which we've got to talk about TLS version 1 for a lot of compliance standards. TLS version 1, uh, we need to get uh, at least uh, up to 1.2, I do believe. Um, version 1, I think. So it's just some food for thought, depending on how your stuff is set up. Um, we'll just have to see how how that uh, rolls and not everybody you know has a um, compliance driven deployment so that may not even affect you but um, some people it may what else do we have here looks like they fixed a lot of stuff in the UI so set system command prompt by system name so that's cool they fixed that but Overall, uh, you know, when, when Ubiquity says that these things are ready to upgrade, I would typically tend to go ahead and, and upgrade after I waited a couple of weeks, you know, just to make sure that everything's going to be stable. Like I said, if you encounter any errors, make sure you've got your configuration backed up, make sure you have an older version of the firmware that was working, and make sure, you know, even though you have the rollback plan in here, why don't you write it down? Just so if things go south, if it hits the fan and you're freaking out, that you can take your pen and your piece of paper and check these things off the list as you roll back. You should always have a rollback or a fallback plan when you're doing upgrades. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to tell me which gear you want to see first out of those two choices. And of, of course, I'm always taking suggestions for Ubiquity videos. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links down there. And as always, if you need consulting, that link is down there as well. And we will see you in the next video.